This video is for information only. Please consult your doctor if you are thinking about fasting yourself and consider doing the fast in a supervised environment. Hi guys and welcome to this mini video log of my five day water fast and before you go a bit crazy and be like oh my god a water fast that's so stressful blah 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 and um, just go on YouTube and double check uh, just go and see all the amazing results that people get in terms of productivity and uh, sort of health benefits it's considered to be a very healthy thing to do. I am doing it in a very controlled way. Yesterday was day zero, so the day, well, day minus one actually. And so yesterday I uh, made sure I had enough magnesium and sodium and sort of bulked up on those important minerals. And today, I still last, eat, last night was the last time I ate at dinner. I'm here at Wonderful Tada. So I'm in this beautiful place that um, is very relaxing. And I am now, 15 hours into my water fast and I'm absolutely fine. Um, obviously I can feel a little bit of hunger but it's nothing crazy. Um, seemingly the worst days are day two and day three and then day four and day five are supposed to be amazing. You're supposed to have loads of energy and productivity, etc. So we'll see how it goes. But this is, uh, uh, yeah, hour 15, uh, just some 15 hours. And this morning I had a glass of water with a nigari salt, which is a magnesium salt. And I had a teaspoon of sodium chloride, so uh, Himalayan sea salt actually. And I also had some apple cider vinegar, which is very, very good for making sure you keep your minerals. Uh, so that's the only thing that you have to be very careful of when you're doing this sort of thing, is that you make sure you don't flush out all your minerals with the water you're drinking. So so I'm just being very careful of that and I'm feeling good. Um, let's see what happens. Okay, so I just made it to 39 hours and I say made it as if it was difficult. It's actually been super easy. The sun is out at Tadar today. It's beautiful and yeah, so far no problems at all. I had a few pangs of hunger yesterday. Uh, sort of waves of hunger came specifically when people were cooking food so the smell of food it seems to be a real trigger but I actually sat with everyone for lunch and dinner and had sort of the communal meals but with no food and um, that wasn't that much of a challenge I mean the only thing that was a challenge is you, I'm used to sort of like picking up food whenever I want it so um, I had to sort of sit on my hands for part of it because I kept nearly accidentally grabbing food <laughs> but um, other than that uh, no real problems. I've had a reasonable amount of energy. I feel really good today. I expected to feel absolutely terrible this morning, but I woke up absolutely fine. Um, I've had my glass of salts and also I forgot to say yesterday, I'm also taking a multivitamin every day uh, just to sort of be very careful with my vitamin and mi mineral um, consumption because that's important. Um, yeah, so no problems. Um, just a bit of background on how I've sort of prepared for this. I've actually been wanting to do this five day fast for quite a while since I heard about it and uh, that it was a good thing to do uh, and it looked like a good challenge. But for the last about sort of 18 months, I've been sort of intermittent fasting a lot of the time. So eating in a sort of six to eight hour window. I don't do that all the time because my life just doesn't really lend itself to routine, but I try and do it whenever I can. Um, I also uh, do about a one day water fast every month, approximately. So I'm kind of used to doing 24 hours on the water fast. Uh, I also have sort of gone on and in and out of a ketogenic diet over the last six months. The first time I did it, I did it for about 10 days and I checked my glucose and ketone levels every day and I slipped into ketosis very, very quickly. So after about a day and a half. So it's very possible that I've done the same again now and I'm not actually going to have the horrific day two that most people have. But don't talk too soon, Emma. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe tomorrow I'll come back with a video or in a couple of minutes I'll come back with a video basically saying that I had the most horrendous time ever, but we'll see. Uh, at the moment, feeling good and yeah, see you tomorrow. Hi guys, so I'm 68 and a half hours from when I last had a meal and again, feeling pretty good. Haven't had too many challenges. Um, I'd say that the only negative effect I've had over the last few days is uh, yesterday morning, this morning, last night and once today as well, I had this sort of five minutes weird cold sweats thing 
Uh, so it was both the times I got up in the morning. So I'm going to try and be a little bit slower getting up now. And also the, the, uh, last night and today's, both of them were sort of when I let my temperature get out of control. So it's actually really interesting at the moment here because it's kind of beautiful in the day or and then it's quite cold inside because it's like marble floors and stuff like that. So I sat by the fire last night and then uh, got too hot uh, and that sort of seemed to trigger these cold sweats. So I'm sort of keeping an eye on that and also um, I've asked uh, my host here Denise to uh, go and get some potassium today so maybe I'll add that to my routine in the mornings um, just in case that's something that's causing it uh, but overall I mean I've just got this huge amount of mental clarity uh, it's very bizarre not having food to think about every day it's lots and lots of time um, I'm really noticing how much time I was spending or I'm noticing how much more time I have uh, not thinking about food and that, that includes you know obviously when am I going to have food when is food those sort of windows of time that you sort of put aside but also there's the fact that I'm not feeling guilty about food and you know I have a long history of a uh, long history or a past history of uh, bulimia and therefore this was a long time ago but as most of you will know that have had eating disorders it's something that doesn't really go away so even though the symptoms aren't necessarily there you know I still have these times of binge eating I still have uh, you know when I'm stressed and I still um, really do think a lot in terms of guilty guilt about food which I hadn't actually realized I was doing until it's gone actually so that's been a really interesting sort of um, uh, you know, an interesting thing that's come up from this this whole experience. But really, sort of the level of mental clarity that I've got has been really amazing. Um, and it's allowed me to have all this time to think about stuff and to think about how I'm going to go and how I'm going to be and my, how my relationship with food is going to change um, once this is done. So that's been really cool. Um, other than that, uh, I haven't had any problems with the hunger stuff. Like it comes, it goes, It's it, when it comes, it's not that extreme. And I've actually been sitting with everyone for their meals every day, which has been really nice to keep the communal aspect. And I know that would be something that would be really difficult for most people. Um, but my boyfriend actually, who's very good at this stuff, noticed, he sort of said to me when we were talking about it that obviously I'm quite used to sort of abstinence you know I'm already vegan I don't drink I don't smoke I don't do all these things so I'm kind of used to being in situations where everyone else is doing something and I'm not not because I don't like it I love drink and I love I love to drink alcohol I love getting drunk um I loved drinking the stuff and I also loved meat when I ate it and I loved eggs and cheese but I'm now very used to but I choose not to do those things because either for health reasons or because uh, of the ethical reasons that I have for those things so I'm kind of used to having to not having something when I've made a mental decision not to have it which was interesting I never thought about it like that so maybe that's why this is slightly easier for me than I've seen on other videos um, yeah, so I had I definitely had slightly less energy than I have over the last couple of days today. I've sort of been floating around. I read my book. I lay in the sun, like did very holiday like things, which I haven't done for a very long time. So and that's kind of helping to sort of de-stress me as well. Uh, so, yeah, uh, coming to the end of what is day three and all is well. No, no serious bad things to report. So uh, sun's going down, it's very beautiful here, and I will see you all tomorrow, or in about two seconds. Okay, bye. Hi guys, uh, apologies for the slightly grainy and dark footage, but basically I've just passed 99 hours or something like that. It's the end of day four, and I'm feeling pretty good as usual. <laughs> Nothing to report really, it's been a pretty boring day. Um, I went out for a walk and I should have had a nap afterwards, I should have listened to my body, uh, but I didn't, so now I'm quite exhausted and it's just before bedtime. So on that note, I know a lot of people have problems with their sleep. I actually haven't been having any problems sleeping at all. I mean, I do tend to just stay up until I need to sleep, to be honest. So that might have something to do with it. So some nights I've been staying up till 3 a.m., sometimes 1.30. It's like 12.30 tonight, I think, maybe one. 
probably going to be one. Uh, but yeah, no problems with my sleeping or anything like that. And yeah, nothing really to report, report from day four. I've just basically been working hard on my computer and I've been, been being pretty productive all around. Um, yeah, nothing to report. Absolutely exhausted though. So bedtime and tomorrow is the last day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Hi guys and welcome to day five. I am about four and a half hours from breaking my fast. Woo! Um, and I gotta say, I could probably just carry on if I wasn't like bored of it. Like it's not actually that difficult in terms of once you get used to the fact that hunger comes, hunger goes, um, and really it's only the smell of food that really triggers me. And other than that, easy. I mean, I probably had a lot less energy than I normally have, but I haven't, it hasn't been noticeably different, really, if I'm honest. I mean, it's quite cold at the moment. It's November, so uh, I'm not so active when it's cold. And um, yeah, like that's really energy in the mornings. I have to say, like getting out of bed in the mornings is, uh, takes me a little bit longer than it normally does. Saying that, people that know me would probably say, don't be ridiculous, Emma, you take ages to get out of bed. But um, it feels to me like I'm taking a bit longer to really get up. But again, that could be something to do with the cold as well. So I'm here in the Tadar studio. I'm about to do a bit of hoop practice. Look how lucky I am with my mirrors. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Um, and I've got this beautiful space and I intend to just use it for an hour or so now. Just doing some sort of light hooping and some stretching probably. Nothing too crazy. But I don't really do like proper exercise anyway, to be honest. Um, yeah, you, the more observant may have noticed, of you may have noticed that I have re-blued my hair. That's nothing to do with the fasting. Well, I mean, the fasting meant I had a bit of time. So, yeah, I yeah, re-blued my hair. Woo! And, uh, yeah, tonight, well, in about four and a half hours, I am going to break my fast with some vegetable soup. Um, nothing too crazy and I'm gonna go to bed on that and then tomorrow it's till uh, one of the owners here it's his birthday so lots of family are coming my dad is turning up from England nothing to do with the birthday he just happens to be here so uh, there's gonna be lots of food and lots of cake and things like that so we'll see how that goes but I've got to remember to take it easy I am excited about starting a new uh, relationship with food and hopefully I'm going to start eating a bit slower I'm really appreciating the food as it is and yes I mean the only thing I can say is I mean I could carry on doing this there doesn't seem to be any problem with that I'm just a bit bored's the wrong word bored's the wrong word I just miss food not in a not in a hunger way just I just really love food you know I love the smell of it I love the visual of it and I think if there's one big thing that this five days has taught me is the fact that I love food not not actually for its uh, sustenance which is an interesting thought you know and so I'm really gonna try and appreciate food in its uh, form and just remember that I don't always need to shove all of it in my face <laughs> But uh, I'll definitely be shoving some of it in my face. Woo! Uh, so yeah, soup tonight and then uh, probably back to near normal eating for tomorrow. And yeah, uh, I'll keep you posted. So that's my plan. I'm going to try and do some follow up. I'm going to try and still do a video a day for the next couple of days just to tell you how I reintegrate. Because I think that's something that's quite often missing from a lot of these videos. And I hope you're having a wonderful day. And I will see you all when I start eating again. Woo! Hi guys, so I'm just ending this video on this little follow-up. So it's been about two days since I finished the fast. And the first night I had soup. And just a small soup. And then I had another small soup. <laughs> because it was delicious. It was a little bit of an anticlimax, if I'm honest, but it was nice to eat. And the next morning I really felt the difference being back on like food. But yet then I ate normally for the two days and all systems are go, absolutely no problems. Talking about systems, something that I didn't mention is that I didn't do any enemas, which is something that a lot of people do when they are fasting. I've included a link in the description of this video about uh, all about from all about fasting. And that's, talks about the different types of enemas you can do. I specifically chose to do nothing, 
partly because I am extremely well I think the gut flora is extremely important and washing it out seems a little bit counterproductive but also your body is perfectly capable of dealing with this by itself and there's no real evidence to suggest that you need to take it out there's a lot of people that talk about toxins etc but once you've expelled stuff you can't reabsorb it through the colon really so it's it's something that is personal preference but I decided not to and everything was fine so that's one thing. I am also including in the description a review article that was published in a journal called Cell Metabolism, which is a pretty high impact journal and a reasonably high impact journal. And it talks about the sort of benefits of this type of fasting and of intermittent fasting. I would definitely not go into a five day fast if I hadn't already done lots of intermittent fasting or one day fasting before. Uh, but there's some really interesting information in there about prolonged fasting prior to chemotherapy to help with symptoms and also uh, studies of, with rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis. So I think this is something that there's going to be a lot more studies in, but there is real science. So yes, so check that out um, and let me know if you have any questions. I do intend to do this for the health benefits side of things at least once a year. Next time I do intend to make sure I have potassium in with my sodium and mag magnesium. So just making sure I take all the electrolytes and all those minerals just to sort of be 100% certain for me that I know that I'm doing the best for my body that I can. I also intend next time to make sure I have uh, a good probiotic or prebiotic heavy diet in the week following the fast just because I think it's probably a good thing to do. It's not something I did this time. Neither of these things are things that I think were detrimental this time, but they're just things that I would do to improve next time. The elephant in the room is most people watch these videos, I think, and, and a lot of people are like, how much weight did you lose? I actually specifically didn't weigh myself before or after. There are several reasons for this. The first of which is I have a past history of eating disorders and it's just not why I'm doing this and I don't want that to be the focus. Secondly, you see these big numbers, people talking about, you know, I lost like this amount of pounds, this amount of kilos, when realistically you're going to put that a lot of that back on again once your water comes back on as you come out of ketosis, if you come out of ketosis, and also when your gut fills up with gut stuff again you know it just the digestive tract being empty is a huge part of that weight loss saying that you are at a thousand calorie deficit you know over the five days even without doing anything so obviously you're going to lose weight i personally haven't seen any particular difference in my size or shape um i felt i feel good but that's i don't think anything to do with weight loss so that's just something to bear in mind and yes so Again, I did say this at the beginning, but just if this is something that you are considering doing, please do it in a supervised environment. Please do your research before you do it and consult your doctor if you have any mental health issues or maybe consult your doctor anyway. Why not? Can't harm. But this is very much a my personal journey and my own research. And yes, any questions you have, please let me know. Okay, bye.